It's situations like Kathy and Lewis Crutes that would fall under the jurisdiction of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or CFPB. As currently designed, the Bureau will have broad powers to set rules for many types of lending in the U.S., everything from mortgages and credit cards to payday loans and check cashing firms. The Bureau was the brainchild of Elizabeth Warren, the former Harvard Law professor and longtime consumer rights champion. In my testimony, I discussed the Consumer Bureau's straightforward mission to make prices and risks clear and to cut down on the fine print so customers can make straight up comparisons among financial products. So they can compare two or three or four credit cards or three or four mortgages before they actually sign on the dotted line. From its inception, the Bureau has been criticized by business groups and Republican leaders in Congress who argue that its powers are too broad and its potential regulations will be a drag on the economy. Earlier this year, 44 Republican senators sent President Obama a letter stating that if changes weren't made, they'd refuse to confirm anyone to run the Bureau, which would seriously hamper its enforcement ability. Nevertheless, in July, President Obama nominated Richard Cordray to head the new Bureau. Cordray was the former Attorney General of Ohio and is well regarded by many consumer advocates, including Elizabeth Warren. Republican leaders said again that until their proposed reforms to the Consumer Bureau are made, they won't confirm anyone for the job. We have no doubt that without proper oversight, the CFPB will only multiply the kind of countless burdensome regulations that are holding our economy back right now, and that it will have countless unintended consequences for individuals and small businesses that constrict credit, stifle growth, and destroy jobs. Joining me now to help wade through the politics of consumer protection is Jeff Madrick. He's a senior fellow at the liberal Roosevelt Institute here in New York. His most recent book is Age of Greed. Jeff, thanks for being here. Pleasure. So, if the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau had existed when the Crutes first got involved with this pension buyout plan, what might have gone differently for them? Well, you can never say it never would have happened, but it most likely would not have happened. But the this bureau would have done and its principal job will be to make clear the price of the contract you're getting into the crude say we sign this they take full responsibility it brings up an obvious question what should the government's role be in terms of people and their own responsibility what they do with their debt what they choose to do with their debt right the government tries to make automobiles safe all kinds of products safe. We're not sophisticated, you and I, sophisticated enough to decide the quality of an automobile or how safe it is. We depend on private services and some uh, federal regulation. This is not, this bureau is not about progressive or even remotely socialist economics. This is conservative economics, which says both sides of the transaction should understand the product, the pricing should be very clear. Information is very important. That's a fundamental precept of making free markets work. In other words, you need some government regulation over very complex products to allow the market to do its job. Again, conservative economic principles, not progressive, left-wing socialist. People who aren't happy with the way this bureau has been set up. One of the things they cite is they don't like the idea that there's one person in charge, that there's one person who's going to be able to have such broad powers. And there's been a suggestion that it should be a committee. What's the argument for having one person in charge? And what's the argument for having a committee in charge? Well, with a committee in charge, uh, you dilute power. Uh, we all know what it's, any of us who've been in business knows what it's like when a committee makes a decision. It often gets compromised. Uh, it gets diluted. If you have one director who's a good director, you get things done. Maybe there is a way to compromise it. I worry more about the attempts to control the financing of this bureau. This bureau is supposed to be self-financed mm. indefinitely. Some in Congress, and certainly some opponents, would like to control the financing and require them to seek financing every year. Well, the SEC and the CFTC, two watchdogs we desperately need after the recent crisis, are having their budgets limited or cut by Congress right now.
We don't want that. And I think Congress is moving because of the lobbyists in the financial community who want to cut down the regulatory authority of these agencies. If you have one director, though, and given the Senate confirmation process as we've seen, isn't that a position that can become highly politicized? Uh, yeah, I think almost all positions now are highly politicized. I think that's the nature of our democracy. It's gotten more so. But I think that's the nature of the beast, and we have to go with that. If we had this bureau, bureau, I would go so far as to say we wouldn't have had the crisis of 2007 and 2008. At least it would not nearly has, uh, have been as steep at, with the repercussions it did have. If the bureau had existed, you really believe it would not have been in the financial crisis that we ended up in in the past three years. How so? How All could that be? That seems like a big statement. It is a big statement. I, I would stand by it. All those outrageous mortgages, to, mostly to subprime borrowers, usually with low incomes, most of them would not have been made because they were highly deceptive from 2003 to 2005, 2006. And even loans to higher income people called Alt-A's, where you didn't have to provide information, often called liar loans, even those many of which went bad because people took on too much debt, even though they were making decent income, many of which went bad, would not have been made. So I think the crisis wouldn't have been totally prevented, but it would not have been nearly as steep. The Senate confirmation hearings for Richard Cordray, the nominee, the president's nominee, have been pushed already to uh, early September. The opponents of this bureau in its current form say it's no deal. He's not getting confirmed unless there are structural changes. How do you see this playing out? I think there will be structural changes. I think we already know Obama compromises. That's almost his middle name these days. There may be the structural changes we're talking about. Uh, a committee kind of environment, maybe with the director as merely head of a committee, and control over the purse. I worry a lot about control over the purse. It's too easy to undermine the authority and, and reach of these regulatory agencies when you cut them back. My gosh, the CFTC staff, which looks over derivatives, which were at the heart of this last crisis, that staff has actually been cut back now. How can that be in America? Just how can that be? If those who oppose this bureau are successful and are able to change some things about it, what is the one thing about Dodd-Frank or about this bureau that you believe must remain untouched? They have to have independent power to investigate uh, bad products, deceptive products, and to enforce the setting of a clear price, usually an interest rate, on every product that exists. That's what they have to be able to do. But if only one thing can survive? This bureau has to be able to demand clarity for every product that is uh, for sale. The price and the risks. And then the rest is up to the buyer to read the fine the print. If it is clear, the responsibility is on the buyer. Jeff Madrick, Age of Greed is the name of your book. Thank you so much for being with us. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.